Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thank you for stopping by. I had expected to get the letter out to people on this weekend. Uh, however, I've been watching in the last few weeks. We're going through a series of, uh, it's almost, uh, well, almost choreogra choreographed, but basically we're coming to the end of the current uh, response to the COVID. And we're going in a direction toward opening up in a profound way. It will come in stages, and we're, I'll talk about it when the time comes, but uh, it's, it's coming in a normal way. And we're going to get back, to, at least our politics are getting back to normal now, but we are uh, in that final stages. I was hoping to have a little bit more to report on that. But it's, it's something that if you've been here long enough and you see how things go and operate, you understand precisely what's going on, and uh, it's good. So <laughs> we'll get to it when the time comes. I wanted tonight just to deal with two topics that people are writing on and that they're c concerned about because they get all sorts of information and they worry it might affect their stay and so on. Understandably, I don't, I, you know, I don't deal with politics of other nations, forget it. You know, I don't deal with person, people and parties in here in Panama. I don't like that either. I'm not in the political business. And so, and I might say, Giuseppe, you did, you had a very, you know, I understand what you were saying when you wrote me, uh, but that really was super political. And I, there are so many nations that you come from out there with so many different situations. And you have different ways of looking at things and different ways of defining terms and everything else. So uh, it's not my interest. This is about Panama. And so some topics, however, have, and they're sort of semi-political because they, they do bring in all sorts of other activities, but they have nothing to do with individual parties or people. And that is, one of them is the, uh, the stories that you're hearing or reading about Haitians, refugees coming through on the way to uh, the U.S. Well, and crossing from Colombia through what's called the Darien Gap, which is a jungle of the first order. And that they die on the way, many, and they, uh, it's like the road to hell. It's an almost unbelievably horrible trek. Uh, but it's been going on, you know, for a number of years. It's not a big secret. If you read the newspapers here, you're aware of this. It's been, it's been happening. But it was in relatively small numbers for quite a while. Uh, Cubans were one group that came through. The people who often caught people's eyes and led to an occasional article here were Somalis from Somalia. It's a long ways in Northeast Africa to come all the way over here. But and, and to end up in Colombia and then come up to us, uh, I mean, it's just amazing. The, the, the people and the places they came from. Recently, somebody from Sri Lanka. I mean, you look at the most amazing collection. But there have been particularly through thousands of uh, Haitians who have been beaten so terribly by hurricanes and by politics in their own country and everything else. It's been very, very, very challenging. So they are they are aware of how dangerous it is, and they're willing to do it. And I understand that. You know? But uh, it now has become a major issue because it's becoming such a wave. So what happens basically is that typically they'll come in, they come in different ways, but they've commonly can come in from, say, Ecuador, where the people who are arranging for their travel, most of the time they're called coyotes or whatever, uh, the criminals who are involved, um, they will, can get them in. Uh, I don't know whether it's because of the lack of needing a visa or what, exactly what the story is. I don't care. Uh, it's, it's the way it happens. Or they can, I understand, come into Colombia, whatever. The point is, is that if they do come in from Ecuador or somewhere outside Colombia, they walk. First, they walk across. Or they might bus if they've got any money left uh, over across Colombia to the far northeastern corner of it, uh, which is uh, on the Caribbean side, the Atlantic side. And they pre prepare to cross in the Darien Gap to get to Panama and on their way to the United States. Now, they definitely are going to the U.S. Every single one of them is going to the U.S. None of them are going to Panama. They have no intentions of staying there. Now, we know that. Uh, they come across in, in terrible shape. And our facility, we had very little. We just had tents, really, for in the beginning, just small groups of people. Uh, but built a structure. Uh, with, I think the Americans actually helped out with that in terms of finance. Uh, but um, most of the costs in the last couple of years have been borne by us, by people here. And um, that's an expensive thing. We have a, 
actually a couple thousand people a week, uh, the estimate is. And that neighborhood, it depends, it rises and falls. Uh, it's a, just a terribly difficult situation. So what happens now, what happens is they arrive, uh, they receive basic medical care, Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, if you, you know, probably know them by that name, um, are operating a post out there. The Ministry of Health is out there, too. But they, you know, the government doesn't have any real presence out in that area because there's very few people who live there. And uh, this is, you know, we'd have no government installations or buildings and so on. So they're out there, but it's, it's complicated. Uh, we have uh, the Centerfront, which is our border police, who are very well trained and very well armed and very savvy. They know their way around that part of the country very well, uh, who are out there to help keep order and also to get these folks into the camp safely. And uh, where they receive basic medical assistance uh, to, and they are fed and so on. Uh, then eventually people want to know what happens after that. And I think some people are concerned that we have thousands of people walking up the Inter-American Highway, you know, on their way north. No, no. We, we don't see these folks. And they don't talk about it. You know. But basically, as far as I understand it, as far as everybody who knows anything about it understands it, is they get bussed up to the, the border of Costa Rica. Now, what Costa Rica does after that, people don't talk about it a lot. Now, and, and they, one less savvy website it seems to think this is something really new uh comes out and says but they we're smuggling them <laughs> we're not smuggling them it basically it boils down to this it's these folks come in in south america whether it's ecuador it's colombia venezuela wherever and they get they have to at least colombia panama costa rica nicaragua honduras guatemala mexico they have no intentions of stopping any of those places. They're going. They, we know where they're going. So we're not stopping them. And trying to stop them, it's ridiculous. And then we have thousands all building. It would be a disaster. Uh, so we just put them, you know, bust them up to the border. We, the Costa Ricans, we all know. We, why don't we talk more about that? We're not trying to advertise this. Uh, use a hedge. What do you think? We want... The, the word to be what a horrible, terrible tragedy it is. And it is exactly that. And everything they write about how horrible that passage is, is true. And we've had it from all sorts of sources. Very, very serious stuff. Um, but we don't want to talk like, oh, well, you know, those that get through, they get fed, they get medical attention, then they get in the bus, they go up to the next country, and so on and so on. That's almost advertising it. I mean, we're not trying to encourage people to do this. It's dangerous. People are dying. This isn't political. The, your politics, you take them and run. This is just human. It's a terrible, terrible thing to do. It's horrible that they have to, to deal with this. And the solution to the problem lies in Haiti and not here. Or anywhere, nor should it in Panama. No. So we do what we have to do. And that's the situation. So the rest of you come here, you won't even, you won't see any of these folks. Uh, you would certainly have no reason to go down way into the eastern section near the Colombian border. You're, you're not going there, I can assure you. Uh, I don't even think you'd be allowed in the area at this stage of the game unless you you know, have permits. And like the people from the various publications and newspapers and magazines who've come over to take a look, they, they get their permissions and so on. So they are taken care of, too. So, But, um, I mean, it's not, as I say, it's not a big secret. It hasn't been from the beginning. But we, we don't talk about some aspects of it because we're not trying to advertise, aren't we wonderful people? We're just trying to help keep this situation moving and fluid until the people who, at the two ends, Haiti and the United States, deal with this. We cannot do that. All right. So that's that. And I don't leave it at that because I don't see any reason why we have to apologize to anybody. We're doing our best. Now, that's that. A second issue that is uh, coming up now, of course, is the new Pandora Papers. <laughs> if it isn't one thing, it's another. Now, this is another set of documents, much larger than, if you remember, the so-called Panama Papers, uh, which outlines in grievous detail all sorts of people all over the world I think it's 336 major politicians in 90 countries or whatever who have uh, been involved in, in one deal or another. 
uh, some of which would be legal and perfectly above ground. Everybody's laws are not the same. So in some instances, no problem. In some instances, people have put their money there for a reason, but they've declared taxes and they paid it and so on, no problem, okay? Others have clearly been meant to avoid paying taxes uh, or to hide it from somebody else, you know, who might want to take it from them and so forth. Uh, it involves yet another Panamanian law firm, okay? I want to stress, though, I wrote the defense of Panama, so to speak, during the Panama Papers, for, was published up in Barron's in, in the U.S., uh, because nobody else was doing it. I just said, come on, let's get serious about this and take a look at it. Because the Panama Papers made us look like we were criminals. So in fact, a law firm in this country was responsible, and they certainly made money from this, and they weren't the only law firm that did, all right? Uh, it went on for 40 years, and it was actually not illegal for a long period in the beginning, but it became that way. It got worse, and then it got out of hand and everything else. Fine. But the point is, is that Panamanians didn't make, other than this law firm, we, the rest of us weren't getting any money. <laughs> you know, the money was from people from your countries and countries like yours. They're the people who came here doing it. This is the people who are making a force of the real money on this whole affair. Uh, they were responsible for anything illegal, as far as I'm concerned. They uh, share the responsibility, obviously, with lawyers who broke the law themselves when that was the case. But if it was the individual breaking the law, it's their responsibility. But to say that Panamanians somehow benefited immensely from this is... I think stretching the truth just a little bit, guys. I think uh, Vladimir Putin did better with it than anybody here in Panama, possibly outside of that uh, law firm, which no longer exists. So here we go. We'll have this one. There's yet another Panamanian law firm has been mentioned in it and so on. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that. That's it. We're, they're already defending themselves. <laughs> I, I, I don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. This will have to sort itself out. Just like the last one, and we're going to get through it. I'm not a, I don't object to these things. It's not because I want to see the country put through this sort of stuff. And in this case, it's not just us. It's a whole bunch of countries, thank God. But more to the point uh, is the subject area. Um, in, in, this, in Panama, this will involve corruption often. This is the big issue. You know, it has been for a while, but it's really growing here, and we're coming to grips with it here in Panama. What I've seen in the, I've been 50-some years in this business, and I see going on here is what is, one expects to go on when a nation is, is beginning to really make progress and move forward. It's their decisions, and they follow, and I don't say anything beyond that. I just say they're heading in the right direction. All right? And this comes up, and it helps raise that issue again and brings home the fact that uh, this is the 21st century, the third decade of the 21st century. It's not the 20th. Things have changed. You don't get away with anything. Nothing's secret anymore. So as a result, the people who have misused the law for their own purposes uh, are now being unmasked and put in full public view of the entire planet. Can't we go out of that one too easily, can you? So it forces this issue, not just here, but as has been pointed out, and I'm sure some of you know, states like South Dakota, Nevada, Wyoming, and others have uh, set up systems that, if anything else, actually handle far more money than many countries uh, that is meant to be kept uh, anonymous. Uh, so if that, you know, in the U.S., we're a federal republic, so every state sets up its own regulations for incorporation. It's not a federal act. It's a, it's a state business. So some states have different, you know, have ones that are very open to protection of people's identity. I mean, I'm not, again, I don't care, right? The point being is it's not just a Panama problem, but it helps us in the continuing focus here on getting our act together and doing a better job on behalf of the people. It's the way it has to happen. It is their business. It is Panama's business. It is Panamanians who will make the decisions here, not gringos or anybody else. And, or I think it, we may be annoying, but <laughs> they will make the decisions. And they are in the process, and it's going to be a multi-year process. It always is. But progress is being made. This is something that pops up. So it will go, and it will come, and we'll have all this. But, you know, mostly these days, you're lucky if you can keep the world's attention for five days. 
I mean, this is going to all the talk. It's going to be a big story in some country <laughs> or whose leadership is discovered to have had money and buried somewhere in the Caymans or whatever. <laughs> uh, and then it will sort of pass away. You know, this is the third time, actually, there were another group, I think they called them the Paradise Papers, and many of them were in regards to Bermuda, I think, Bahamas, whatever. Hardly got any attention at all. This is really huge and was given a big push. Uh, so it's getting a lot of attention. But guys, like I say, nothing seems to remain on the front headlines for very long unless it constantly is providing new information and something shocking, you know, and all that. Uh, otherwise, people move on to the next crisis. Isn't it interesting, the world we live in today? So those are two issues that I know concern some people, and I, I hope that this has helped you a little bit in, in trying to understand it. Uh, I, I don't plan on spending a great deal of time on it because, as I say, neither of these things are any interruption in your – should be an interruption in your planning. Nothing's unusual about them, and as I said, especially – well, with both of these problems, it's not just Panama. It's lots and lots of countries, and when it comes to refugees, uh, uh, we are – we're doing very well with our situation when you consider – what we need to deal with. And, um, and we have 94,000 from Venezuela, and the last number I saw. We're taking, you know, we, we're feeding them decently, too. We, we do that. So if you think that's wrong, then maybe this isn't the right country for you. But we do our best to try to be helpful without encouraging it. <sighs> what more can we do? So thank you very much for dropping by. Um, there's uh, not the most cheerful news in the world, but that's all right. There is cheerful news coming, and we are very definitely getting closer to that moment. Uh, it will unfold, unless there's some terrible thing that happens in the meantime. You always have to be careful what you say. But I will be back to talk about that uh, when I feel it's comfortable in doing so, because if I may wait a while, just a day or two, to see if we get some official statements coming out, because we're getting near that point when they normally would. But... No guarantees, so I'm not going to wait forever on that. We'll just see, and I'm just going to assume it's coming. Uh, until then, uh, whatever may happen, thank you very much for stopping in tonight, and I hope to see you again.